Welcome to June's Lico Challenge. Today's problem is permutation sequence. The set 1, 2, 3 to n contains n factorial unique permutations. By listing and labeling all permutations in order, this is what we would get. And we're going to be given a k, and we want to return the kth permutation sequence. So say that we're given n3, th these are all the permutations. k5, we want to return 3, 1, 2. k3, we want to return 2, 1, 3. The problem's straightforward enough, but it's pretty difficult because we already know that the brute force method isn't going to work. We could, in theory, create a result list and calculate every single permutation. That's not too hard. And just return the kth sequence in that list. But that's going to take an n factorial time complexity, which we already know is way too long. So how can we write some algorithm to take advantage of the pattern since it's sorted, we know it's sorted, and we have all these limitations to generate the number that we know is going to be at the kth sequence. So let's take a look at these numbers, see if there's anything we could figure out from it. OK. So already we notice one thing. We see that all the ones are going to be at position 0, 1. Twos will be at um, 2 and 3. And threes will be at 4 and 5. And that's interesting because that first position these three or these six indexes or these three spaces can represent like the one two threes inside of our inside of our list of integers are set and surely there's something we can take advantage of given the k that we're given say we're given like five that we could calculate which number we want to be at at first. So at k equals 5, we already know that it's going to be here. We want to be pointing to this sec, um, third index or, or index 2. And once we do that, we can kind of say, oh, OK, well, if we can figure that out, then all that means is the next number is going to be some permutation of 1 and 2, like one of the sequences in the permutations of 1 and 2. Same thing here. It's like 3 plus permutations 1 and 2. Um, and like 2 would be what? It would be like 2, 1, and 3, right? So what could we do to figure that out? Well, OK, we're given k. Say that we want to instead pick the index number that we want to figure out. So say that instead of 5, we'll say minus 1 it and have some index number. 5 minus 1, so that's 4, right? So say that this is 4. And we have these factorials, and we know that the number of permutations equals just 3 times 2 times 1. What happens when we divide this index number by the next or previous factorial number 2? Well, when we do that, we basically figure out which index number we want to be picking out first. So here, 4 divided by 2 is 0, oh, I'm sorry, that's not 0, it's 2, <laughs> and that would be the index 3, right? So once we can figure that out, then we can just pop it off of our numbers that we're trying to select. So 1, 2, 3, say, OK, we already know it's, it's, it's going to be 3 at the first position. Add that to some sort of output index or output list. And now we have 1 and 2. What's left? Well, we already calculated um, 4 divided by 2 is going to be 0. So now, now we can just recalculate our index to say, OK, what's going to be left after we um, uh, do a modular by that same, same factorial number? So if we do that, or at the same position, then we can figure out, OK, index is now going to be 0. So indeed, once there's 1, 2 left, we select 0. And then it's going to have only 2 left at that point. And then still index number is going to be 0. So now we select 2. So it's going to be 3, 1, 2. Um, so that's pretty complicated. And it really took me a while to, a lot of experimentation to get to get that solution. But let's figure out like how we can write that program programmatically. Um, so first, I'm going to create a string that i for i in the range of 1, 2, n. Because our numbers need to be represented by 1, 2, 3, whatever. Actually, it's n plus 1. Now we want to initiate our, an output list. 
and that's going to be just a list where I'm going to make it into a string afterwards. Okay, and finally, I need to calculate the factorial. Uh, so the way you could do that is just use the math factorial like this. But um, you can also make it into a list and write that out as well. There's there's a way to do that as well, but I, I, th I think this is just fine if you understand what's going on. So, so we have a factorial and we want to calculate an index number, so that's just k minus 1. So while nums, let's first, um, let's see, calculate the index number that we want to pop off from our from our nums. So how do we do that? Index is going to be equal to index divided by, well, first we got to calculate the new factorial, which is factorial divided by the length of nums, right? Because we know it's right now it's six, and we want to get, there's still three numbers, and we want to get that previous factorial. So that's just going to be the length of nums. So cool. Now index number, that's going to be the, oh, we don't want to call it index, we'll call it position, I guess, and index divided by factorial. So cool. Now what's the number that we want to pop off? Well, nums.pop off our position, and we'll add that to our output. Append out, add that to our output. So great. So now our nums no longer contains, it's going to pop off that 3, like I said, and only has 1 and 2 now. But we're not done, because we can't just go on to the next one. We actually need to recalculate this index number. Um, so how can we do that? That's going to be index. Uh, all we need to do is just do a modular off the factorial that we calculated. And that's going to allow us... Um, I don't know how to explain it, but that's going to allow us to have the correct index number two to figure out our position. Okay, so now that should have our output list, and all I have to do then is just return the output, use the string join method, and return that. Let me see if this works. So this should be 213. And there, it's accepted. Yeah, so this was the most concise solution um, that I kind of played around with and, and found. It might be better to make this factorial into a list and rather than calculating like this every time, um, if, if you think that's more readable. Uh, but otherwise, the hard part for me was getting this. Like I, I kept failing, figuring out, not understanding like I have to recalculate that index number. Um, but hopefully, this helps because um, it's not an easy question. All right, thank you.